awesome duty to introduce such a man of great stature, yet so humble in his being. Uh, several of us who have had the opportunity to share in his work and his ministry there in the Kenya region have been truly blessed by this humble man. And I say this, I will give you his full name. It's Eutychus Nzingu Mwambula. <laughs> But anyway, uh, back in 2009, Deacon Johnny Jennings and I had the opportunity to first meet him for our first time. And um, all we can say to this day is to God be the Lord for the great things that this man does in that region. And I want to tell you that I heard a lot this year when we went on the mission field with him. We were able to go into a region that I'm sure he has longed to get into. He is not only the pastor of Baptist Chapel there in Nairobi City, one of the largest Baptist churches, I believe, in the slum area there. But he is also the uh, president or the head or whatever you want to call him of uh, the Nairobi Baptist Association. And within that association, there are at least 84 churches at my last count that I remember that are under his leadership. Know, a lot of people want to carry the title of overseer and bishop, but this man actually does the work and cares very little about a title. But I want you to know the stature that he stands. I said to him earlier, we're going to fatten him up before he goes back to Kenya. He's small in stature in some ways, but when you hear his voice of thunder, the voice from heaven roars through him. He loves the Lord and always glad to tell you about it. Um, while we're in Kenya, many of the times they, he is doing the um, interpreting for us. And I know this past summer that there was an occasion that the people were praising him. But he didn't want to, I could see him get moved by the moment, but not want to have to share it. That's how humble he is. And one of the sisters and I looked at each other and said, they're talking about him. And he doesn't want to let us know what good things they're saying about him. But we got enough sense to know we don't know Swahili, we know language. <laughs> but I want you to know that this man doesn't mind preaching and giving you the love of God through the word of God. Amen? Uh, mighty man of God, he takes care of us, tremendously takes care of us in high fashion when we're on the soil of Africa. Amen? And we want you to know that if you choose to ever go, you'll be well taken care of. You don't have to worry about a thing. He orchestrates our moves and he makes sure that we're taken care of wherever we go. The best that he can offer. So we want you to not sit back. We want you to be anxious to hear a word from the Lord. Amen. This mighty man. Pray with him much. He is the, the husband of one wife and they have some glorious young children. Or I don't want to say young children, some young men there that are coming behind them, and I'm sure that they are so very proud of him, such as we are proud to call him a friend in Jesus. Amen. So I want you to be prepared to pray with him, because they told me, man told me that I'm running him crazy and ragged while I have him for the weekend, but I want you to know that he has to be up and leave the house at 7.30 in the morning and go to the radio station, because he'll be ministering there. And any of you who are in the ministry and will care to join us in the morning from 9 to 11. We'll be at Lizard Thicket and Blackwood in the back room and sharing some time with him there for him to share a little bit more about the work. So right now, I ask you to stand to your feet at least and give him a hand of praise.
good to be here tonight, and I want to give God all the honor and all the glory because I'm here because of Him. I want to say a special thank you to uh, the pastor of this church, Amen. Pastor Kevin, for giving me a chance to come over and uh, to share with you from the Word of God. I want also to thank Pastor, uh, pastor Karen. Uh, like she said, uh, she has been a dear friend since 2009 when she came to Kenya. I want you to know we have been very much blessed by our ministry and uh, even the way she, she brings the word of God. This last, uh, this last July she was in Kenya and uh, I had uh, the privilege of hearing her preach for the first time. I want you to know she is a preacher. She was on fire for Jesus. Hallelujah. And I want to say in these last days, we need men and women who are on fire for Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. So I want to thank you all. You're just an amazing people. You know, I felt like I'm just in our church in Nairobi. Amen. Because in Nairobi we sing, we worship the Lord, Amen. and we mean it. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'm blessed. I'm blessed to be here, and I hope to come back someday. Amen. 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 Much has been said about me, and therefore I don't want to repeat myself. But I want to say I'm a senior pastor of a church in Nairobi by the name Baptist Chapel, a church that I began about 14 years ago uh, when God first called me to this church because it was a new church, it was a new work. I went there to plan this church and uh, things did not uh, work out the way I expected them to work. You know, for several months I met with only three people and I was very, very, very frustrated and, uh, and I complained a lot to God. It was like God was calling me from familiar to unfamiliar, from popular to unpopular. And so I had so many questions to ask God. But after some time, and even after complaining, after, you know, after, after all those frustrations, things never changed. But I came to a point where I realized that this was not my work. I was just there. Mine was just to report on duty and to be used of God. And I say to God, God, I'm not going to complain. You have brought me here. This is a new area. These are your people. I pray that you're going to grow this church. And when I prayed that prayer and I made that statement, God just started growing the church. To say we have over 300 people that come to our church every yes, Sunday morning. Yes, yes, we have over 160 children who come and they have been taught the word of God every day. And I want to say this is not my dream. This is the dream of the Lord. So that is just briefly about, about me. I run a big ministry in, uh, in the slums of Korogosho. And when I talk about slum area, I'm talking of, a, of an area of about three square miles. It has a population of anywhere from 300,000 to three quarters of a million people who live in shacks, who live in shandies. These people have no income, and if there's any income, it's a dollar a day or less than a dollar a day. Most of these people walk to their dump, a big dump that is uh, just right across where we are. And they go there and they try to find whatever they can find. They will use that as food, rotten chicken, uh, food that has been trashed there, and they feed on that. But God has given us a ministry. And we go to this community and our, our goal and our vision is to show these people the, the redemptive love of Jesus Christ. And I want to say currently we are ministering to over 350 children who come to our center. We provide for them education from far, from kindergarten all the way to the 8th grade. And I want to say... We have seen the faithfulness of the Lord in this ministry. God has provided miraculously for this 
ministry and children of the church day and day. We have over 80 children who come from the Muslim families and they come, they hear the word of God, they, they, they study their Bible, they sing Christian songs and God is changing them. And I want you to pray with me. I want you to pray with me that out of the seed that we are planting, God will grow some of these uh, Muslim children to where they will accept Jesus as Lord and Savior of their lives. For with God, nothing is impossible. And so I want you to pray for that ministry. We, we have our own challenges there. We've been uh, doing uh, the primary, uh, uh, well, the elementary, and maybe the middle school. But now we're moving to another level, which is the high school. And uh, this is the vision that God has given for me uh, to build a high school for them. And I want to encourage you and I want to request your prayers and encourage you to be praying for me even while I'm gone. Yes. And that if the Lord lays in your heart to, to bless us, to bless us, to bless this ministry and this uh, big project and big task that I have, you're very much welcome. Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 I think I've said much about myself. So I want us to go to the Word of God.